Hello everyone, welcome back to Watercolor Wednesday. This is Kendra Krebs, guest designer this week, and I'm bringing you this Valentine's Day inspired card. I used a little girl from the Art Impressions Watercolor Little Girl set, as well as the flowers and grass from the uh, Bible flower set, as well as the Bible foliage set. And you can use any subject here. I just chose her. I thought she was really sweet. So um, what I really wanted to do this week, though, is teach you how to uh, get a multidimensional sky. That's something a lot of people ask me. Um, it's something that a lot of people struggle with, especially using two colors. So I thought that would be really fun. And of course, I've got my little um, heart-shaped moon in there. And um, I put that in there because I just thought it would be fun. And, you know, you don't always have to go so literal with everything. You can You can have have fun with it and sort of make it whimsical and make it your own. With that said, let's go ahead and get started. So I have my watercolor paper here with my die cut heart and then my little heart up in the left hand corner for the moon. And I'm going to take my sticky note and just put this right down here. I already used this once, but that's okay. We can reuse things, right? And I'm going to take my brown marker and all the colors will be linked below. And I'm going to just ink everything but one little strip right in here where my flower crown is going to be coming through. And it's not a big deal if you end up inking that area. It just crowds the crown a little bit too much in my opinion. And I just like it to be out of the way. I liked there to be a really light line or no line. Okay, and actually I'm gonna move this up just a touch. And I will stamp her in there. Okay. So you can see her little space buns, which I love. And I'm gonna take my brush now and just lightly start the process of pulling the color out of the lines for her hair because I'm going to layer this a few times and I just want to get that going so that those areas can dry and I can come back in and layer again. Just start that first layer. Of course we want to leave our highlight so you can see I'm leaving a highlight up here and up here and then up on top as well. Okay, now I'm going to take my flower and I'm going to ink this with my pink. We'll just start off with the pink. We're going to use three colors. We're going to use a really bright pink, a really bright yellow, and a really bright orange. <laughs> and you guys know I don't use these super bright colors all that often, so I thought it would be fun to kind of, you know, make something brighter for you for the holiday coming up. Now I'm going to come in with the orange and just stamp in a few clusters of the orange as well as the yellow. I never know what to do with my cap. Do you guys have that problem? I'm like, do I hold it? Do I put it down? Do I put it on the end of my pen? And I guess it just depends on how much you plan to use it, but I never do the same thing for every project. Like I'll never just always put the cap on the end. I'm always looking for the cap. Can anyone relate? <laughs> okay, now I'm gonna take my grass, ink it with the bright green color. And this is definitely not a green that I use normally, but I just love the brightness with the pink and the orange and the yellow. So I'm just going to stamp these greens in. Notice I didn't add any water yet. I wanted these to be nice and tight, so I didn't add any water to that. Now that we have our uh, ground done, let's go ahead and go into her crown. And I'm gonna grab the pink again, but this time, I'm just going to ink the top few dots. And you can arrange your paper to where it's comfortable. But these don't have to be perfect. 
So you don't need your positioner for this unless you really want it. You can totally use it if you want it. And then you can make sure to get the flowers exactly where you want. But I just am not too concerned with it being perfect, perfect. So I'm just going to wing it. And I'm coming in and just, I'm still clustering. I'm still getting dark and light variation. I haven't forgotten that part, even though it's a smaller space. Same thing, I'm coming in with the orange this time. And just stamping in some of these. And then with the yellow, I'm actually just gonna take the detail tip and put some yellow in manually, <laughs> just like this. Kind of stipple it in. Okay. Now we can take our water and begin to dab our flowers. And I usually will teach to go color by color, but I really want these to mix. So I'm gonna say go from one side all the way across because I don't want a lot of differentiation between the colors for this one. <laughs> okay, I'm just dabbing and then I'm gonna take my brush and come down into my grass. Notice I'm pulling down. Normally we pull out and up, or up and out, but I'm pulling down because I don't wanna come out over my flowers. I want the flowers to actually be growing from the grass. I'm gonna be coming down. Make sure you come all the way to the edge of your heart. That's how you're gonna get the heart shape is by pulling the color out to the edge. Okay, now that I've got my base done, I'm gonna come in and just dab her little crown here. Isn't that just darling? I love this little crown. I love this little girl. She's one of my favorites. Okay, now I'm going to begin to add the details of her clothes and hair and skin tone. So I'm going to take my brown color and put a little bit of that onto my palette. I'm going to take that and once again we're going to come into her hair and just kind of pull or brush some of that color in. Had a little bit too much water there so we'll pull some of that off. And then I like to bring just a touch of her hair down here, just so it looks more like a crown coming across. And again, we have our highlights here and then our shadowed areas as well. Okay. Just soften that a touch. All right, so now I'm going to take my flesh tone, my lightest flesh tone, and it doesn't matter what skin tone you're doing. You're probably not gonna see this very well. Um, it is so, so light. But no matter what color skin tone you're doing, you need to start with a very light tone because even though you have highlights on your skin tone, they're not going to be pure white. They're going to be a skin tone highlight, right? So you wanna start with something a little bit lighter, even if you intend to go darker with the skin. So I'm gonna take my brush and just lightly brush in some of that kind of a light blush pink. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of my brown here. Um, I want to darken up her skin tone a little bit, but I don't wanna just take brown and put it onto her arms and neck because uh, darker skin tones are not just brown. You have a little bit of yellow, you have a little bit of pink. You've gotta warm up the skin tone a little bit, otherwise um, it's just gonna look lifeless. So I take a little bit of pink and a little bit of yellow and I just warm that brown up. So I'm gonna take a little bit of this and just a touch of that pink. And 
bring in that. See how warm that is? And I'm going to just lightly blend this out just a touch. Okay, now she's wearing a white shirt, but I wouldn't leave it just white because even white things have shading and shadows, right? So I'm going to take my blue, my dark blue, and I'm just going to put in a little bit of some maybe wrinkle shadows in here because she's been playing and we'll just kind of blend these out just a little bit so they're not so apparent. Blend, blend, blend. And you can make her little jeans, whatever color you want. I think I'll do her as just that same blue color, but I'll keep it nice and dark. And then of course I'll still leave a highlight there. Okay. Now that her hair is more dry, I can come back in and layer again. We always want to wait for the hair to dry before we try to come back in and layer more. If you try to layer when the hair is wet or when you know your previous layer is still wet, it's just it's not going to happen because it's going to kind of diffuse out into the rest of the color and you're not going to get any shadow. You're just going to get a really wet painting <laughs> with no shading or highlights. Okay. Now we are going to start the sky. So I'm going to take my blue, that dark blue, and get a good amount on there. And then I'm also taking a lighter blue here. This is super pretty light blue. And I wanna make sure that my little heart, you could cut out a circle if you wanted to and just make it a traditional moon. But because this was Valentine's Day and I'm kinda of cheesy like that, <laughs> I wanted to put in a little heart for the moon. Okay. Now I'm going to take a little bit of that blue and I'm going to start on the very top edge and just start dabbing the color into the edge. If you're more comfortable, if you feel like you just always get sort of um, streaking effects in your sky, you can wet your paper first like this. This is called wet on wet and you can grab your blues like that. So it doesn't have to be straight onto the paper. Now, if you do that, you have to use more ink because the water is going to um, lessen the concentration and it's going to be lighter. So if you want it a deeper, bolder blue, you need to use less water. So I'm just dabbing. I'm going to go over my heart and I don't want to make a line around my heart like this. I just want to pretty much act like that heart isn't even there. So I'm just dabbing all around it. And I'm gonna mix a little bit of this lighter blue with the darker so that I get a mid-tone. And then I can start dabbing. And as you can see, I'm literally just moving the color around. like that. And this is what's giving it sort of that multi-dimensionality effect is when you just move the color around. I'm not using straight strokes, right? I'm just dabbing. And I'm coming around the heart. Grab a little bit more of that. And I'm just working my way down. Now I'm going to use the straight light blue down in here. So can you kind of start seeing that gradient? You see mostly that purpley blue 
up here and then you get a mid-tone here and then you've got the lightest blue down at the bottom. Keep in mind if you touch her hair or her flowers or anything like that, you're gonna pull them out into the sky, which is okay, it's not the end of the world, don't worry about it. But I just want you to be aware of that. I've done that many times. <laughs> And I'm like, oh, meant to do that, right? <laughs> okay. So I'm just dab, dab, dabbing. And I'm going to bring just a little bit more color. I have color all, all over my finger. So you want to, if you are a messy watercolorist like I am, you want to really be aware of what's on your fingers when you're touching your work because you can easily sort of get smudgy prints all over your beautiful watercolor. Okay, just going to make sure that heart is nice and solid around the edge. And maybe I'll bring just a little bit more up in here. Okay. All right. So now we're going to take off the little heart um, die cut and see what we have. Oh, look how cute that is. So there is our little heart shaped moon. And I think I got a little fuzz on there or something, but I can get that off later. And then we will take off our tape. You can see I ran out of my um, <laughs> sticker paper and had to find something else that would work. <laughs> so here is our project. And of course you want to always sign your work. I am just going to put my initials in here. And that is the project for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. If you try it out uh, and post it, make sure you tag us. And again, check out all the colors and the products in the uh, description box below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up and ring the bell if you want notifications on future videos. Definitely subscribe and we will see you next week. Bye!